It was 1900, and Galveston was the grandest city in Texas. With one of the busiest commercial ports in the nation, the Galveston Strand was nicknamed the Wall Street of the South. But all that would change one fateful day in September. Rain was predicted for that weekend, but there were no real harbingers. We didn't even have ship to shore radio at that time. The Rosenberg Library in Galveston owns the largest collection of 1900 storm history in the country. There we got a peek back at September 8th, 1900, a day that started like any other. The people of Galveston had no way of knowing their beloved city was about to be washed off the map. By noon, the surf was pounding. The breakers were so high and so intense that they were actually breaking up the bathhouses. An enormous Category 4 hurricane surged onto the island that evening, propelling a 15-foot storm surge with it. Houses and other structures made of wood were being smashed to pieces. Debris was being carried from one block into the city and just literally smashing other buildings as it went along. The great storm destroyed everything in its path, leaving a twisted mess of rubble behind. In one heartbreaking tale, nuns who ran St. Mary's Orphanage tethered more than 90 children together in an attempt to save their lives. Only three survived. Every aspect of the city was destroyed. Humans, animals, streetcars, streetcar tracks. You really get a vision from uh, hell. That September day changed Galveston Island forever. By the time the floodwaters receded, at least 8,000 people had lost their lives. It remains the deadliest natural disaster in U.S. history, a night that was commemorated by this memorial here on the Galveston Seawall. When the sun rose, the queen city of the Gulf was obliterated, but Galveston's unwavering spirit never faded. The vast majority of survivors decided to stay and rebuild. Clara Barton actually came to Galveston following the hurricane to build worldwide attention to help with fundraising. So the recovery happened quickly. The city was determined to prevent such a tragedy from ever happening again. And so the construction of the seawall started just very shortly after the hurricane itself. Galveston built a massive concrete seawall spanning six miles long to create a barrier from the Gulf. Workers also pumped sand across the island, raising the city's elevation by 8 to 17 feet. It was one of the greatest engineering feats in Texas history, an incredible triumph that emerged from tragedy. For ABC 13, I'm Dave Ward.